Thelma Alice Todd, born July 29, 1906, was an American actress and comedian often referred to by the nickname The Ice Cream Blonde as well as Hot Toddy. During her heyday, she appeared in approximately 120 feature films and shorts during the late 1920s and early 1930s. She was known for her comedic appearances in the films such as The Marx Brothers Monkey Business, and she co-starred with Buster Keaton and Jimmy Durante in Speak Easily. Thelma Todd was born in Lawrence, Massachusetts, to John Saw Todd and Alice Elizabeth Edwards. After completing high school, she initially wanted to become a school teacher and enrolled at the Laurel Normal School after graduating from high school in 1923. In her late teens, she began entering beauty pageants, winning the title of Miss Massachusetts in 1925. While representing her home state, she was spotted by a Hollywood talent scout and began her career in film at Paramount. During the silent film era, Thelma Todd appeared in numerous supporting roles that made full use of her beauty, but gave her little chance to act. Todd was given the opportunity to expand her roles when a producer, Hal Roach, signed her to appear with such comedy stars as Harry Langdon, Charlie Chase, and Laurel Hardy. In 1931, Thelma Todd had an opportunity to act in her own slapstick comedy shorts, running 17 to 27 minutes each. And then over time, she became highly regarded as a capable film comedian. She also appeared in multiple other dramas, such as the original 1931 film version of The Maltese Falcon starring Ricardo Cortez, who was playing Sam Spade, and she played Miles Archer, the treacherous widow. In August of 1934, Todd opened a successful cafe, Thelma Todd's Sidewalk Cafe. It attracted a diverse clientele of Hollywood celebrities, as well as many tourists. Thelma Todd would continue her career all the way through 1935. She would then be featured in a full-length Laurel Hardy comedy, The Bohemian Girl. This was her last film. She died after completing all of her scenes, but most of them were reshot. Producer Roach erased all of Todd's dialogue and limited her appearance to one musical number. Good morning. And who are you? Um, I brought your glove back. Thank you. If I need any more dry cleaning, I'll let you know. Oh, no, there's some mistake. Um, may I introduce myself? My name's Tom Daly. Which conveys nothing to me. No, but I hope it's going to. In what way? Uh, well, it, it's very difficult to explain. Um, you like your brother, don't you? Yes. Oh. You're, you're very fond of your father, aren't you? Of course, but what's it all about? Well, I, I have their permission, and I only need your permission, and everything will be all right. All right. Yes, um, you see, it's, it's, very, it's a very awkward situation for all of us. And it only needs you to say yes, and uh, everything will be cleared up. Yes to what? Will you... Oh, excuse me. Uh, will you marry me? Marry you? Yes, please. It seems to be going very well. Uh-huh. What a girl. The date is December 16th, 1935, a Monday morning. Thelma Todd was found dead in her car inside the garage. Todd's maid found her employer's body in the garage slumped over the wheel of her Lincoln convertible. The coroner ruled her death a suicide, the cause of death being carbon monoxide poisoning. To this day, that verdict is on the books as the official explanation of Todd's death. While a grand jury ruled that Todd committed suicide, it was unable to explain her broken nose and the bruises around her throat and two cracked ribs. Police investigations ruled that she had spent the previous Saturday night, December 14th, at the Tocadero, a popular Hollywood restaurant, at a party hosted by entertainer Stanley Lupino and his daughter Ida. At the restaurant, she had a brief but unpleasant exchange with her ex-husband. However, her friend stated that she was in good spirits and was aware of nothing unusual in her life that could suggest a reason for her committing suicide. This is Thelma Todd before her death, with a gun and guard dog. She'd been receiving threats. This fact is one of the few things that point to something a bit more complicated than suicide. 
There were several suspects who might have been responsible for these threats. Todd's ex-husband, Pat DiCicco, a self-described agent with underworld connections, and after one too many beatings, Todd divorced him, and it was known among friends that he felt humiliated and may have sought revenge. Another potential suspect was Lucky Luciano, a psychopathic mobster involved in prostitution, gambling, and extortion in Los Angeles. Thelma Todd had a torturous relationship with the mobster, which included beatings, and unfortunately, he also got her hooked on amphetamines. But the LAPD didn't follow any leads that were connected to the claim that Thelma Todd was being harassed by someone. The LAPD instead concluded that Todd's death was accidental, the result of her either warming up her car to drive it or using the heater to keep herself warm. Those actions being tied to the carbon monoxide poisoning that allegedly led to her death. A coroner's inquest into Todd's death was held on December 18, 1935. An autopsy surgeon A.P. Wagner testified that there were no marks of violence anywhere upon or within the body, but he went on to mention that there was only a superficial contusion under the lower lip. There were informal accounts of greater signs of injury. The jury ruled that the death appeared to be accidental, but recommended further investigation to be made into the case by proper authorities. Subsequently, a grand jury probe was held to determine whether Todd's death was a murder. There were four weeks of testimony. The inquiry was closed with no evidence of murder being brought forward. The case was closed by the Homicide Bureau, which listed the death as accidental with possible suicide tendencies. However, investigators were unable to find any motive for suicide, or a suicide note. Large crowds from all walks of life came to the inquest of Thelma Todd's death. This picture shows Roland West as he testifies on the stand as one of the key witnesses. West was the owner of the garage in which Thelma died in, he was a business partner of hers, and he was both the director and producer of her films. After all of the legal formalities were finished, Thelma Todd's visitation was held at the Pierce Brothers Monterey at 720 West Washington Boulevard in Los Angeles. Thelma Todd's body was cremated after her mother's death in 1969. Her cremated remains were placed in her mother's casket and buried in Bellevue Cemetery in her hometown of Lawrence, Massachusetts. To this day, her mysterious death has never been properly confirmed as suicide, and has remained one of the most perplexing deaths of a celebrity that the public knows of. Hello, hello, I hope you enjoyed today's horror story, and if you did, let me know in the comments down below. And leave a like if you liked the video, and if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing? And if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you get these notifications every time. And as always, I gotta thank the Patreon supporters who made all of this happen. Thank you to Taki, Bunny Boo, Dustin, Canned Eggplant, Kyle, Hostmar, Keith Myers, Hannah, Pixie Art 5, Lil Ring Green, Catherine Taylor, Jason, Arolina, Rajan, Clara, John Robinson, Ethan, Vermont, Noobsler, Trenton Golden, Trojan, Yeet Master, Arjun, Noah, Brody, Muffy Lou Who, Cleric, Sir Teacup, Immortal EXC, and Trey, thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated and makes videos like this happen so that everybody can get the content that they want. And as always, stay zesty.